All right, guys. Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about how to name your limited liability company. All right, let's get started. Okay, so if you're setting up a limited liability company, coming up with a name is something that seems to trip a lot of people up. I can't tell you how many times I've been on the phone with someone and I say, hey, now I need a name or two for your limited liability company. And it's just silence. I don't know what to call it. I got to talk to my spouse about this. I have to get back to you. Hey, names are not that important, but there's some things you should consider when naming it. But for sure, don't get hung up on it because things can happen. I mean, I had this one client years ago was setting up 17 limited liability companies for this person in Oregon. There were two physicians and they couldn't agree on the names. And so they went months without setting up the LLCs because of names. And then this one of the, uh, the wife is involved in a car accident. She wasn't at fault. She actually got hit from behind and her car was plowed into the other three cars in front of her that had already collided. But she had the nicest car. She had the S-Class Mercedes. So everyone sued her. And at that point in time, they were scrambling, trying to get their properties transferred. And I told them, hey, it's too late. Everything could have been protected, but you couldn't decide on some names. So when it comes to setting up your LLC, if you're going to hold, if it's not a business, look, okay, per se, that associated with you, do not use your name. That is the number one mistake that I see people make. They put their own name down on their LLC, Clint Coons Limited Liability Company. Now, why the hell would I want to do, th do that, right? I mean, unless I want to brand myself and this company and myself being associated with it, if it's going to hold assets, your name should not be in there at all. I mean, part of my strategy is about using anonymity. Well, you just went and blew it for yourself by adding your name to the LLC. Now, the other thing to consider too, is that if you come up with a name, for example, if you decided, hey, I want to, uh, we're going to call this Evergreen Investing. All right. People get attached to names. They find one name and then they want to go out there and continue to use that same name. So you're going to create multiple LLCs, Evergreen Investing, what is called EI LLC. Here's one. Then they come on the Evergreen Investing 1 LLC, Evergreen Investing 2 LLC, and so forth down the line. And they're creating multiple LLCs all with the same name. Now, first off, okay, think of it this way. If you're trying to build anonymity, right? Even though your name's not associated with these entities, what is associated with all of these entities? That one Wyoming holding company that we have down here, right here, this Wyoming LLC. So you've just basically told someone, hey, all of these entities are really owned by the same guy. There's not a lot of research that has to go into this because I'm gonna make that assumption, whoever's created them this way, that's still the same investor. So you wanna minimize that to the, do not use this type of naming convention. Not only is it, I think, giving away too much information to tell someone, hey, E1 e or EI1, two, three, four, five, they're all associated together. It's confusing, right? Who's it confusing to? Well, number one, it's confusing to your bookkeeper. It's confusing to your attorney. I've had discussions with people before, and I think I'm talking about Evergreen 1, and we have to be talking about Evergreen 4 because he didn't say Evergreen 4. He just said, you know, Evergreen, the fourth one. I'm like, what, what, what? And I get all confused about which entity we're supposed to be dealing with. So it makes it hard to communicate with other people. Not only is it other people, you'll get it screwed up. And I'm telling you this from firsthand experience. I've been there. I did this at one point in time, and I will never do it again because of that, because of the confusion associated with that. So in naming your LLC, try to stay away from this type of stuff. So that brings us then to setting it up for the real estate. Then what do we actually call it if we're not going to be using this type of structure like this? Well, what I will tell you is you can pick any name you want, but first you have to figure out what you're going to be using. If you're going to be using a land trust associated with it, then watch my video on naming your land trust because that's key here. You want to make sure those sync up. What I'll typically tell people is name the LLC after the property address, okay? So if you already have the property, that makes it extremely easy to do. So you would set up your LLC if the property was located on 732 Broadway, 
All right, then I would set this LLC up with 732 Broadway LLC. That's what I would use. I know which property is held there. Um, another thing that sometimes I'll put into my LLCs as well is the state. For example, it, if it was I own property in multiple different states, and so when I'm setting them up, so when I'm just looking down the line of my entities, I'll put a designation on here. For example, 732 Broadway or 732 Broadway, say NC LLC. Why do I put NC? Because that tells me that is my North Carolina LLCs. And so every time I see NC, I have the address and that NC designation tell me which state it's in. So if you invest in multiple states and you're setting up multiple limited liability companies, this is an easy way for you to remember which property is located in which state, right? Because as you buy more, you, you tend to forget. I, I do. I can't keep track of them all. So I use uh, the NC designation on there or whatever state that you're investing in uh, as a rule of thumb. Now, the problem that comes up is for individuals who uh, are, are setting up LLCs in advance. So, so this is a common thing that you should do when you're investing in real estate. If you know that you're going to be buying property and you, you, you know the state that you want to be investing in, maybe set up one or two LLCs and have them on the shelf. And so you don't own the property yet, but you're going to be investing in, in a certain state. And so you can't use the property address because you haven't acquired it yet. And the other thing is, is you wouldn't want to set up an LLC right in advance of making an offer on a particular property. For example, let's say I was going to make an offer on 732 Broadway. So I hop online, let's, you know, some states such as Wyoming, you can create the entity just like that, right? So I could have 732 Broadway in five minutes, ready to go. So then I make the offer for 732 Broadway. I've seen this come up before that it throws off realtors um, and, and sellers of property because they start wondering, why do you have an LLC set up with the exact same name of my property? And they think something fishy is going on. So, so that you got to kind of be leery of coming up with the name before you actually have this property under contract. So don't make the offer in the name of that LLC because I've seen it make uh, cause problems for people. So it brings me to this point. When you're gonna, if you don't own the property yet, think about it in terms of where you're gonna be investing. So if I knew I was going to be investing in say Memphis, Tennessee, and I'm gonna be looking in, a, in that area, maybe in a certain county, maybe you do something with the combinations of, of that county and the, in the city. So again, it's a mnemonic that helps you remember where it's located, but it doesn't have the exact address yet in there. The other thing you're always free to do is this, come up with any generic name that you want, for your limited liability company, and then you can always change it later on. So after you get the property under contract, so let's say I started off with this LLC here, and I just set it up as um, R and R LLC because I just had to get something set up, made short and simple. I now I have this property one three seven five Olive. Okay, under contract, and I know that I'm gonna be closing on that property. And if it's a residential property and you're using debt, you're closing in your own name anyway. So you got plenty of time to do this. It's not like you have to have the LLC set up to close and unless you're using a portfolio lender. But um, in that case, what I would do is at this point in time, I would amend this filing with the Secretary of State to change the name to 1375 Olive LLC. And so if you're doing that, um, and you haven't set up your EIN. So this is one of the things also I like to throw out there. When, when you set up an LLC, you have to get an employer identification number because you need that EIN to open up the bank account. Now, it's nice to have all that done ahead of time, right? Get your LLC set up, get that bank account set up so everything's ready to roll when you transfer the property in. Well, this is one of those scenarios where maybe you hold off on applying for the EIN. And the reason I say this is that if you applied for the EIN under r and LLC, but then you change the name, well, then you're gonna have to update the IRS with that name change. And if you don't wanna have to update the IRS and go through that process, then hold off on obtaining the EIN. That means file the LLC, get it set up. You know you're not gonna close in that LLC because it's a single family property that you're getting a mortgage on. So having that bank account, that EIN, isn't that critical at this stage. Once you've got that property under contract, then when you go back, change the name on your LLC, after the name is changed with the Secretary of State, then file for the EIN uh, for your entity. That way the EIN as initially issued will match the current name of the entity. 
I mean, there's no hard and fast rules when it comes to choosing names for your limited liability companies, but I tend to like to gravitate towards things that give me some indication of where that property is located based upon the LLC name. And if you can use the address in it, even better. What you want to stay away from is tying your name to that limited liability company that's owning your real estate. The only time you want to use that is if you're going to go out there and try to brand yourself. All right, guys, that was my video on how to name your real estate limited liability company. Take care.